living underneath gray skies. Now I'm dancing in the light of heaven. Grace has found me, brought me back to life. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. got a new song for you this morning. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. Who you are, Lord. There is a promise that points beyond my failure. There is a still voice to silence all Spoken 
in that song, you have spoken. God is speaking. He is always, always speaking. We don't always listen. We don't always hear, but He is speaking and He is speaking today. And my verse that I want to read comes from Jeremiah 33 verse 3. This verse has just been resonating in my heart all week. I've been thinking about it and it says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you and even show you great and mighty things, things which have been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. I just think that's such an amazing verse. Jeremiah wrote that verse to the Israelites. He was in prison when he wrote that verse and he was encouraging them to call out to God. Do we call out to God enough? Because God says in that verse, I will answer you. I will answer you whatever it is that you need today. God will answer you. I think everybody in this room is looking for an answer to something. Whether it be a job situation, a family situation, a little thing that's bothering you at work. Maybe you're looking for a life partner. Maybe your finances are a mess. You need an answer. God has spoken. He says today, call to me and I will answer. Call out to Him today. You know what? I learned a lesson this week. <laughs> Isn't it funny when God teaches you a little lesson? I love the fact He does it His way. When He's speaking, He does it His way and not always the way we expect. I lost a pair of prescription sunglasses a, a couple of weeks ago and it really bothered me. I thought that's a lot of money. I don't want to go buy in another pair. And I remembered when I lost them, but I could not find them. So every day in the week I was praying, God, where are my sunglasses? Show me a picture. Because I'd used that before, you see. I'd called on God before when I'd lost something and He'd show me pictures of where it was in the house. Nothing. And then I was just like, God, just, just show me. And I thought He was telling me one thing. So I turned my car inside out, upside down. No glasses. I went back to a couple of shops I'd been to, no glasses. I started looking in silly places around my house. You know how it is when you lose something, you start looking in the most obscure places where you couldn't possibly find those glasses, no glasses. So all week I couldn't find them and I was getting to that point thinking, do you know what, summer's coming, I like a pair of sunglasses. Saturday morning I woke up and I read this verse and I just thought, do you know what, God, if my glasses are in my house, reveal them to me because I've done everything else I know to do. I have followed your principles and I want my sunglasses back. So that morning I was cleaning my house and I found them in the bathroom cabinet. I don't know why they were there, but there they were. And I'm telling you that little tale because I learned a lesson. God doesn't always work the same way. So sometimes, We've got to press into Him. He always wants to answer. He speaks in mysteries sometimes. It says He speaks in secrets. And I think I misunderstood that verse. You know, when you think about a secret, you think that maybe He doesn't want you to know. But God does want you to know. He wants to tell you things. He's not a mean God. He's not hiding it away from you. My granddad years ago, when we used to go and stay on holiday, he used to be walking to the lounge. He'd be sat on his chair chuckling. We were like, what are you up to? And he wouldn't say much, but we quickly cottoned on. He used to hide coins around the lounge for us to find. He wouldn't really say much, but we began to guess. And it was always in a different place. And you know, it's not that he was being mean. He just took great pleasure in us 
actually seeking it out and finding that coin. And that's what God does. He wants us to search things out. He wants us to draw close to Him. But He does it through mysteries sometimes, through secrets. He says, draw close to me and I will draw close to you. I'll tell you things. Maybe you're bothered about your future today. Ask Him, call out to Him and He will show you. He's a God of revelation. He wants to reveal things to you. He wants to show you things in His words. He wants to show you things in the praise and worship. He wants to show you things in the preach. He wants to share things with you, but you have to call out to Him. Father, I thank You that You are a God that reveals things to us. You want us to draw close to You. Father, I pray this week that You would show things to Your people, that You would show them Your hearts, that You would show them those secrets, that You would show them those mysteries, that You would reveal Yourself to Your people this week in the Name of Jesus. Amen. not to disappoint this morning. Father, we just want to thank you, Father, for your presence this morning. We want to thank you so much for your heart, for your desire to build and encourage and strengthen and lift, Father, eyes this morning to see afresh, to, to hear afresh your word in our hearts and lives, Father. We just thank you for the release of your spirit now in Jesus' name. And just receive, Father, your touch and receive your heart for us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You can sit down. Okay, so this morning, what's on the menu for this morning, you may be wondering. <clears throat> well, hopefully a little, something for everybody this morning. Um, you know, as I've been praying and, and praying for you, as I've been kind of thinking about this message and, and what, you know, my heart is and, and God's heart for you this morning, uh, it's very much that God, as He's been speaking to me in recent months about this topic, is that God wants to, for some of you, it will be building on where you are. It'll be saying, hey, I'm strong or I'm, I'm developing in this area. And God's just going to put another layer of maybe understanding or a layer of strength for you as you move forward in this area. 
For others, it's going to be a matter of saying, well, yeah, maybe I was kind of there at one point, but, but things have been a bit of a challenge over time. And, and actually, God wants to do some building in you again and rebuild what, what was once strong and rebuild the wall, if you like, like Jerusalem, to rebuild that wall of, of hope in your heart, to rebuild that wall of expectation within you this morning. And for others, there's that place within you that, that maybe has gotten a little bit broken uh, and he wants to heal and he wants to touch you and heal you this morning. We've already sung about healing this morning and, and I believe God can heal this morning and bring healing to things that are broken on the inside in our lives at times if we're willing to just let him get into that place again and, and take a risk and, and step out and let him touch us this morning. So that's just a little flavour of what I think is on the agenda for God this morning. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick off and this morning our message uh, is the title changed yesterday morning as I sat down and was praying and I got this kind of sense of a, of a visual aid. You know, I like a bit of a visual aid. And so this morning, the title of our message is Raise the Bar. Raise the Bar. So I'd like to invite my helpers across to... Uh... Sorry, Simon, thank you. I'm getting the message that to sort of let you go. Thank you, Simon. So good. So good. So my two helpers are, arising, are coming up, as you can see, and you'll be wondering what is going on here. What is this very expensive visual aid that has obviously been prepared with great detail and, and depth? Marvellous. And you know, Hannah gets to be back for two days and she's already being a, a little helper for me. So guess what the topic of today is? Raise the bar. What might this be? The bar. Okay, so... On, on Monday, last Monday, I went and played golf for the first time in about three years. Now, had I been playing golf regularly, there would still have been a certain degree of uncertainty about the outcome of this particular round of golf. Now, I'm standing at the front tee, I'm standing at the first tee, ready to tee off. Now, where do you think the bar is for me at this point in terms of my expectation? It's pretty, it's probably actually down on the ground. So should we start down here? Okay, so I'm standing here and this little thing in my head is going, where's this ball going to go? And I'm just thinking, I don't care as long as I hit the ball. Just give a clean strike on the ball would be nice. Maybe it will fly down the fairway. I often pray for that kind of anointing to be like a, a, a world kind of PGA golfer just by the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, just... And I, I scuff the ground and, and it hits, the ball goes, well, at least it's gone in the right direction. I can see the ball, that helps, I can find it. That's a good start. So my expectation has, has raised slightly. Can we kind of go up a foot or so? Okay. My expectation is now about here for my next shot. So I line up for the next shot. Ah, it's not bad, actually. That's, that's, oh, my expectation is starting to rise. Now, by the fifth hole... It's back on the ground again, and I'm thinking, man, I think I might just walk the rest of the way and just, just keep them company, because this is just so painful. Uh, and through, so through the course of the round, there you go, my expectation is kind of going like this. And it's kind of from one shot to the next, oh, that's promising, now that's a disaster, until the final hole, where I par the final hole. Now, that was, that was a, so my expectation for the next round of golf is up here somewhere when I next tee off. Now the key is, thank you, thank you very much, that every time I'm swinging, there's a degree of uncertainty. I, I hope, I hope that this is going to go well, but I have no certainty whatsoever of the outcome of this particular stroke. Now we can live our lives that way, living with that degree of uncertainty, living with that sense of, I just don't know what the outcome is going to be, and living in the light of that. And so our expectation is driven by our experience. <laughs> If we have a good experience, it's slightly higher. If it's a bad experience, it goes down and so on and so forth. Now, how does that apply to us today? What about your experience in prayer? Where's your expectation this morning when it comes to answers to prayer? Is it, is it here? Is it kind of down low because you haven't seen much recently or you've, you've not seen the answer you're looking for? Or is it up here because you've had a, a good result and, but it fluctuates from one time to the next? What is the basis for your expectation? What are you basing it upon? And maybe God's expectation is somewhere up here, way beyond even our highest expectation in our most positive of moments, in our most clear sense of vision and frame of mind, God's expectation is probably way up at the ceiling. But he's limited by our 
bar. God wants to do this, but he can't because we're here. And he wants to raise the bar. Okay. Thank you so much for your help this morning. I'm going to keep this over here for a minute. I'll dispose of it shortly. Okay, so there's a few people that we could refer to in the Bible whose expectation fluctuated over time, who God spoke into their lives and showed them something, gave them hope for their future. And yet their experience and and how they lived that out varied from one day to the next. Abraham is one of those people. Uh, He's referred to in the passage in Hebrews 11 as a person of great faith and along with many others, but we know that they're all flawed and their journey is quite an interesting one. When you read the journey of the story in Genesis, you see how his journey fluctuates. And yet later on in, in the New Testament, when it refers back to Abraham, it doesn't talk about the low times. It doesn't talk about when he didn't quite match up. It talked about that point at which faith connected with God and and God was able to release blessing and favour and promise into his life because that's the stuff God looks at. That's the stuff God testifies of in relation to our experience when he looks at us through the blood of his son. He's seeing us made clean and made new through that hope and promise and our hope anchored in the goodness of God and in his character. So Abraham's journey is an interesting one. He wanted a son. What is it you want today? What do you expect? What are you looking for today? He wanted a son. He was about 75 years of age and his expectation was down there. They've tried, they've tried, they've tried. It's not going to happen. End of story. Until God comes along and intervenes and God comes and meets Abraham And he says to Abraham, Abraham, you're going to have a child. Your descendants are going to be like the stars in the sky. Come out and have a look. And he looks at the stars in the sky and he looks at the sand and he says, look, that's what your descendants are going to be like. And so Abraham's expectation is kind of heaven level, way beyond where I can reach because God's spoken into his heart. And so he's expecting this child. Now a year goes by and five years goes by and... 10 years goes by and, and, and 15 years goes by, 20 years goes by and his expectation is back down here, this, this father of faith, this, this man of power for the hour and because of the fact that his expectation, his hope had been diminished, his hope had been deferred, it led to some poor choices, it led to some compromise it led to him having a child by the handmaid of his, of his wife and having an Ishmael instead of a son of promise because of the fact that his hope had been deferred and he made some poor choices as a consequence because there was nothing holding him. There was nothing anchoring him. You know where I'm going here. So in Hebrews chapter 6, uh, so in Hebrews 6 it talks of Abraham and it talks about his experience And it talks about how how he was hoping for this thing to come through. And it says in Hebrews 6 that God made him a promise. And this hope, it says, we have as an anchor for the soul. This hope is an anchor. It holds you. It sets you in the midst of the storm. And if you saw the uh, word nugget recently, I did a bit of a nerd on anchors. Anyone excited about anchors this morning? Yeah? A sad bunch, aren't you? It's just like me. So anyway, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Why an anchor? Why does that matter? A couple of things. If you learn nothing else, you can learn something about anchors this morning. So an anchor, this anchor that we have is an anchor that is not just fixed in some random patch of soil. It is fixed in the presence of God. It is fixed in God's covenant, God's promise through the blood of his son. That's the hope, the anchor we have. And firstly, it's a hope of resurrection. It's a hope of eternal life. A lot of New Testament hope, when you look at it, is talking about a life eternal. It says, give a reason for this hope that's within you. Be ready to give a reason for this hope when you're confronted by death and challenge, as the New Testament Christians were. There was a hope for something bigger and that went beyond just the natural world that they were limited to. This hope we have as an anchor for the soul, this, this word that's been spoken. And Abraham has this word that's been spoken, so shall your descendants be, it says in Romans 4 when it refers back to it. And yet he'd had the word spoken, a bit like Peter when he stepped out onto the water. He had hope. 
he had an expectation that when he stepped out, that, that he was going to be supported. But, but then further down, fear came and his hope disappeared and he started to sink. This hope we have as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure, which goes into the presence of God. Now, anchors, two things to learn about an anchor. When you cast an anchor, one of the ways to ensure that it is firm, that it is established, you're not going to drift, is by going in reverse. Because by doing that, it digs into the ground and it then takes hold and it's firmly set. Now, you may feel sometimes like your life is in reverse. God wants his hope as a result to dig deeper into his presence, to dig deeper into his promise. So that's what's holding you, not the natural hope we might lean on in other areas. This hope we have as an anchor for the soul. And the other thing about this anchor is that if you have an anchor planted and you're faced by a storm, the anchor holds you facing the storm. Because if you turn to run from the storm, you're much more likely to be overwhelmed by the winds and the waves. If you turn side on, you'll get buffeted. We've all seen the films. They steer the ship into the waves, don't they? The anchor holds us and holds the bow of the boat so that it faces the storm, so that it keeps moving and is held steadfast in the midst. So back to Abraham. Abraham has, has lost this hope and God comes to him again. And maybe you've been in that situation. You've had hope and promise and expectation and, and you're feeling a bit rough about the fact you're not living or feel that you're living out the reality of it as you would like. And God comes to you again. He comes to Abraham again and he says, hey, look, Abraham, I tell you what, in a year from now, in a year from now, after 24 years, in a year from now, this son is going to come. And his wife laughs and says, oh, you're having a laugh, aren't you? Not now, it's too late. My season has passed. It's too late. And God says, that's okay, you can laugh. In a year from now, you will have a son. And you can call him laughter if that's what you want to do. Because there is a promise coming. And I think in terms of Abraham, another verse in Romans 4, which is talking about the same situation and referring back to him. And it says in Romans 4 verse 18, it says, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. In hope, contrary to all of the things that were opposing, contrary to the things that had undermined, contrary to the fact that his body wasn't physically able any longer, it was impossible. And that's the thing part about expectation. Sometimes we keep our expectation at the level that we can deliver, because then we don't get disappointed, because it's within our reach, it's within our grasp. And God says, no, I've got a higher expectation that with man is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. That's the realm I want you to step into. That's the realm where I receive glory. That's the realm where you have a testimony to the goodness of God that you are seeing in the land of the living. So he became the father of many nations. And this word, according to what was spoken. And there's so many things that you know, resonate already this morning. This whole sense of according to what was spoken. Your expectation, is it according to your experience? Is it according to someone else's testimony of if you do this, you'll get this outcome? Is it according to what is spoken this morning? If we're honest, in every area, according to what is spoken in every area, is your prayer life, your expectation when you pray, according to what is spoken? Ask and you shall receive. Is that your expectation? This is what God's been challenging me about daily. And it starts with the small things. Day to day, what do we expect on a daily basis? What can we look forward to when we rise in the morning? What can we look forward to when Jesus said, pray this day, give us our daily bread. He wanted us daily to have an encounter, a daily experience of his provision. We can expect God's provision. We can have a hope and an expectation that he is a faithful provider that meets our every need according to his riches and glory. We can expect him to be a good shepherd who guides us in paths of righteousness, who clears confusion away and gives us wisdom and direction in the situations that we're facing with. We can expect him to give us the power to overcome because it says he who is born of God overcomes the world. We can expect to overcome this morning. 
We can. Yeah? Okay, let's finish Abraham and we'll get back to that in a moment because I think we're just kind of distilling, aren't we? According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. I want you to substitute that word descendants for something specific for you this morning. According to what is spoken, so shall your... What what are you going to put in that sentence this morning? So shall your be. What's it going to be for you this morning? What's that one thing this morning? Because it doesn't need to be 15. We're not looking for, we're looking for one. So shall your what? What's it going to be? Healing maybe. He, so shall your healing be according to what was spoken. So shall your healing be. Yeah? Now that's been a challenge for me over the years because I've had a fight with health and healing for a number of years. It's not visible. It's not on the surface. Those in my connect group know the fight and the struggle and the battle I've had. And I can tell you now, it's been hard to hope. It's been hard, really hard at times, really hard. I can't tell you how hard it's been at times to deal with the emotion of this. But according to what is spoken, so shall your healing be. Yeah? Now, I say that for two reasons this morning. One is because there was a time, and when we were doing academy together and different things like this, when the topic of healing came up to teach on healing, I would back off from it. I'd be like, I can't teach on that. I can't speak on it because my life is just in a mess in that area. So how can I speak? But I've kind of got past that where I'm going, no, that's not going to stop me from talking about the fact that, that God is good, that he wants to heal people. He wants them set free. And there was a time, and I'm sharing this because you may be in a situation or maybe in the future you will be and it'll be useful for you. Where I got to a point where I was low, I mean low, my expectation was not at ground level, it was buried, you couldn't see it. And I remember going to a, a, a message, I went to a, a meeting and there was a guy, and that's why it's good to get into meetings because God can speak to you and, and lift you out of that stuff sometimes. And uh, it says he lifts you up out of the out of the miry pit and puts your foot on a rock and gives you a new song to sing and restores your heart and your song. And, and I was in this, in this, uh, in this meeting and, and the guy was talking about, we're going to jump to another Old Testament character, he was talking about Elijah. And Elijah, in chapter 18 of 1 Kings, after Carmel and all the wonderful breakthroughs and victories he'd seen, It says he ran ahead of the king's chariots. And when he arrived at Samaria, Jezebel sent a message and said, right, you're you're a dead man. I've got people coming after you. You're a dead man. And you know what it says? The wording it uses is really interesting. Because it says in that wording that Ezekiel, when he saw what she said, he ran. When he saw what she said. What do you see? Because he saw what she said, and not according to what was spoken, he ran. Fear came into his heart. And, and that's something God's been, it's quite funny, God's been talking to me. I've been going out walking and praying and walking with the dog and stuff. And, and God's been talking to me about fear as, as a blocker for receiving breakthrough, as a blocker for receiving hope and expectation and promise. And I'm like, why, God's, why is God talking to me about fear because that was kind of leaving the door open for things not to be received or to, to let you know, the enemy steal. And Elijah saw this thing and he ran in fear. What do you see? Abraham saw the sun and the stars and the sand and it filled him with hope. But then he lost that vision. He saw, he no longer saw it and he went into compromises. Elijah saw what she said. And back to this meeting. So I'm in this meeting and I'll be completely honest with you. Um, I'm in this meeting and I'm just thinking, I don't, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to live this way. I don't want to live this way. But I thought, well, I can't end, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, serious. I can't, th- I can't end my life. I have a wife and young children. I can't, I can't. That's not an option. I don't want to live this way, but I can't go that way. I'm stuck. What do I do? Ezekiel saw, sorry, Elijah saw what she said and ran. And, and the message in that was, what are you seeing? God wants you to see beyond this thing. He wants you to see beyond and be able to see afresh so that I can lift you out of this and, and give you the breakthrough you need. 
and the hope and the promise that I can release because I am a God of hope. And Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it in all its fullness. And that's what I want to bring you into. And that is, that is, you know, as you can tell, that was probably some 10, 15 years ago. But I still remember that moment when God said, hey, let's see beyond that now. Let's not just see what that's saying. Let's see what I'm saying and let's move forward and not be stuck in that place. God is wanting us to see what he says so that we can move on and have a fresh expectation. David is another great example of someone who had hope and expectation through difficulty and trial. And in Psalm 62 verse 5, he says, My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. He's talking to himself. Sometimes we hear about talking, you know, speaking God's word. You have to start with yourself. My soul, I'm telling you, because you don't, you're, not, you're not there right now, so I need to talk to you and get you where you need to be. Wait silently for God alone. That word wait in the Hebrew, if you look at the word wait and hope, they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. It is the same as the word hope. Wait with expectation. Wait expectantly for God alone. For my expectation, it's from him. That's where it's coming from. It's not from the doctor's report. It's not from the current climate. My hope is from him. Many people in our world today are pinning their hopes on vaccine. They're pinning their hopes on an economic turnaround. They're pinning their hopes on a change of, of political regime. They're pinning their hopes on, on a member of their family making different choices. They're pinning their hopes on, th but my hope, my expectation is from him. Because he doesn't disappoint. He doesn't let you down. He will never fail you or forsake you. So true hope. What is this true hope that causes us to raise the bar? True hope is a positive expectation based on God's person and power. Colossians 1.27 says that there is Christ in us, the hope of glory that is living within us. True hope is a spiritual quality. It's not a natural quality. It's not about emotion. It's not about being an optimistic person. It's a spiritual power that, that God put, brings within us, a hope. It says faith, hope, and love. These three remain. Love hopes all things. It's a gift of God. It's something the Holy Spirit imparts, which is why it's possible for each and every one of us to receive hope and for that to be empowered. It's eternal. There is an eternal hope that we live in the light of. That is what's different between you and me and everyone out there that doesn't know God. It says in Ephesians that we were without hope and without God in the world. But we're not without God in the world any longer. We're not without hope any longer. We have a hope and an expectation. Hope is a helmet. It can protect our thoughts. It can protect our lives. It's unseen. It's about bringing something that's out there in the future that you can't yet see, either with your natural eye, and bringing it into your reality. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you're not hoping, if your hope has been attacked and eroded, your faith has nothing to grab hold of. You have to have a hope for faith to be able to pull it into reality. It's like a tug of war. Faith is pulling hope into your reality. It's taking hold and it's pulling it. And it's like, it's like the anchor man, you know, in the tug of war, isn't it? You've always got like the sumo wrestler at the back, you know. So, you know, I'm not sure you might look around the room and think, I'd like that person as an anchor man. I'm not going to call anybody out specifically. But you might go, I want that as my anchor man. Because as that tug of war, he'll anchor me. That's your hope. It anchors you. And it means that your faith can pull things into reality. It can pull what's in your unseen future into your seen present. That's what God wants us to do and take hold of him because he is a God of hope. In Hebrews 11, that story of, of faith, all these, these great archetypes of faith, there's a couple of people that aren't named. I think, oh, very interesting couple. And they, get, they had some great parenting skills, a bit like Andy and Esther, wasn't that parenting lesson? Great this morning. You know, that's an interesting lesson for us to apply going forward. So Hebrews 11, verse 13, talks about Moses' parents. And it says, Moses' parents, not afraid of the king's command, did X, Y, Z. And they, were, they didn't subject themselves to the fear 
and they took hold of the hope and promise and they moved forward. And, and it talks there in Hebrews 11:13. it says that having seen, they embraced, they saw something far off. They embraced it and they said, hey, look, we're not, we're not people that are subject to this temporary world. They saw it, they embraced it and they spoke and they said, hey, look, we're speaking because we're not part of this temporary system, this temporary world. True hope is based on and fueled by what God has spoken. And true hope is impossible. How about that for a final little word of encouragement? True hope, God hope, is not something possible in the natural. But that's okay, because we're not part of the natural. We are part of the life of God in the spirit. And that is what we live in. So expectation, what can you expect today? What area is it in that, as God has spoken, so shall your prayer life be or so shall your heart's desire the fulfillment of that desire be or or so shall your purpose and your fruitfulness be so shall your fulfillment of calling and promise be whatever point you are in your life today so shall your because you've been obedient to my word given it shall be given to you be faithful in the small things you'll be made ruler over much so shall your be because of what you've spoken The woman with the issue of blood is another example. You know, this woman had been subject for 12 years to illness, to pain. She'd gone to many doctors, it says in Mark 5. Didn't get any better, just grew worse. Now, that's that's a great candidate for depression, a great candidate for fear, to be afraid that this this was her lot, that that would be it for the rest of her life. It wasn't going to improve. You know, you can imagine those things in her life, those fears, those challenges that she was faced with. And then she heard there was this glimmer of hope, this glimmer of, of this answer, this Jesus that, that was out there that she started to hear about and, and started to see something different in terms of her future and what could be possible. And she decided she was going to move forward and take some steps toward this. And, and it's interesting in Mark 5 because it says she spoke to herself again. She said to herself, if I can only just touch the hem of his garment... I'm going to be made healed. If I can only just touch it, if I can just touch it, and she was speaking to herself, if I can just touch that garment, I'm going to be made whole. This hope living within her. And I love this image of her kind of reaching out and touching this garment. And Jesus is oblivious to the presence of this woman, but the Holy Spirit isn't. This power that went out of Jesus is the Holy Spirit going, hey, I'm going to heal you now. This power that went out from it wasn't just an electrical shock she got from Jesus fully charged. It was God's willingness to touch her life as she reached out and touched that garment and made that point of connection. And he said, right, bam, you're well. You're healed. You've risen out of all of that depression and the difficulty you were faced with and and your hope being deferred by all these doctors over the years and your heart becoming sick as a consequence. But yet you've reached out again. You've touched again. And, and Jesus restored again. And maybe there's a restoring again, I referred to that earlier, of hope, of God building expectation and, and doing something new in your heart and life. And every new season has to start with new hope, doesn't it? You have to see something new again and move towards it and, and move into it. And again, when Jesus prayed, there was a blind man that he prayed for. Uh, and this blind man, he prayed for him and he said, how's it, how's it looking? How's it looking? And the guy kind of looked up and said, well, yeah, kind of people are like trees and it's, it's improved, but it's not quite there yet. Be encouraged. When Jesus prayed, it didn't always happen. <laughs> he had another go. He said, right, okay, let's, let's have another go. Uh, and he spat on his eyes and, and he touched him again and, the, and, the, and he was restored and he could see because he touched him a second time. Maybe you need a touch of a, a second time this morning for your sight to be restored, for your vision to be fully restored. There is a freedom that God wants to bring into our hearts. There are so many things that we can expect. You know, David said, I'm expecting that I'm going to see God's goodness in the land of the living. He wrote this psalm about being a shepherd while he was out in the fields. And he said, I tell you what, I'm expecting goodness and mercy to follow me all the days of my life. I'm expecting, the psalmist said, for God to daily load me with benefits. I'm expecting... A future and a hope, Jeremiah 29 says, I've got thoughts for you, a future and a hope 
I have a hope for you. I have a planned future and hope for you to walk into. Just hope in me, rest and trust in me. Live from that place of hope and expectation and look at what I can do. David faced Goliath, but he was full of hope while others ran in fear. David was chased through the wilderness for 10 years, having been told he was gonna be king and, and the, the, man, the great, man of greatest power in the nation was pursuing him to kill him and yet he did not give up on his hope. He was faced with fear and yet he could say in Psalm 34, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. Delivered me, you can be delivered from all your fears. That fear can be broken. God says, do not fear, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, I am your God. I can strengthen you, I can help you, I can uphold you. He was able to trust God so that he would experience his favour as a shield. So this morning, what does that mean for you? How do we respond this morning? We've already spoken about God wanting to restore and rebuild those walls of hope in our lives. God setting us free and us being delivered from fear. Maybe painting a new picture, seeing again. You know, sometimes you see some of the old classics, don't you, these pictures. And if they've been left to, to weather and left in, to be exposed to the elements to some extent, they get dirty, they gather that dirt over there, you can't see the picture as clearly. And you get a restorer that comes along and he cleans it off and suddenly the brightness of the colours comes back and the clarity of what the artist was trying to depict is restored and maybe there's a cleansing that needs to happen that, that God can come and cleanse and restore that brightness again, the colours and the vibrancy of what God's, as the artist, wants and has always intended for our lives, that we would see what the artist intended. Sometimes we need to just come into agreement with what God has spoken. So shall your descendants be. To not agree with the voice of fear any longer, to not agree with the voice of despair and discouragement, but to agree again, to come back into alignment with what God has spoken, with what he's saying that we might wait upon him, that we might tap into some of the stories that can encourage and inspire hope. And, and I really would encourage you, you know, Life City Stories isn't just a nice idea. Stories inspires hope. Your story can inspire hope for somebody else. It can stir an expectation. Hey, God did it for them, I, I, he can do it for me. God is good. Sometimes we need to call on others. Moses needed people to hold his arms up when faced with battle. He needed support, he needed strength. That's not a weakness, that's why we're a body. That's why we're together, to be there, to stand together. Sometimes you just need to remember. Again, David said, hey, remember soul. Forget not his benefits. He's forgiven all your sins. He's healed all your diseases. He crowns you with love and compassion. Remember what he has done. We've already touched on talking to ourselves. A bit of madness doesn't do any harm. Talk to yourself a little bit in the right way. Because if you don't, other voices talk. Yeah, that uncertainty, get it out of your golf swing. Those voices were in my head all the way. It was bad news, I tell you. Talk to yourself in the right way. And this morning, receive, ask for an infusion of hope. Closing verses, Romans 15 verses 12 and 13. And here it says, and again Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse and he who shall rise to reign. In him the Gentiles shall hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we just wanna thank you this morning for your goodness. We wanna thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit to be filled with hope filled with expectation to raise the bar again, to hear again what you have spoken, for that to be firmly anchored in our hearts, in our lives, in our minds, to see again, Father, in Jesus' name. And, and I just wanna invite you this morning that if you wanna respond to that point and say, hey, look, Phil, I need that hope restoring. 
I need, there's something broken that's broken in my heart and I need healing where that hope has been. There's something broken needs healing and fixing on the inside this morning. I want to lay hold of that hope again. I want to come back into agreement with what God has spoken. Then I just want to invite you to rise this morning. If you're in that position this morning, I want you to step, stand up right now and we can pray for you together that you would experience that. Or maybe it's physical healing you need this morning. Tell you what, I'm not embarrassed to say that God's a healer. I'm not embarrassed to be bold about the fact that God is good, that He has power to heal, to deliver this morning, that He gives us authority to speak. Like woman that she reached out and touched the hem of His garment. I had someone else refer, he said, God's Word is like the hem today. If you just reach out and touch His Word, if you're, he says he sends forth his word and heals, you can receive healing through his word being touching your life this morning. Father, just raise your hands if you've responded. Just lift your hands now. Father, we just thank you now in the name of Jesus. And we just want to declare, Father, restoration. We declare, Father, your hope now being released, Lord, in Jesus' name, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for just breathing hope breathing new hope now in the name of Jesus, lifting those eyes, Father, in Jesus' name, to see again, to be inspired again, to be strengthened again. And we come against fear in Jesus' name. We cut you off fear now. We break your hold now in the name of Jesus. Those suggestions, those lies, we break them. In the name of Jesus, we say, this is what He has spoken. So shall your promise be. This is what God has spoken. We declare that voice and that word in Jesus' name, Father, and we just thank you now for your healing. Heal the broken heart, Father. Restore, rebuild in the name of Jesus, Father. And that touch of healing, physical healing now, we say in the name of Jesus, be whole. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Be free in Jesus' name. You don't need hands to lay on you. You don't need a human to touch you right now because God touches you by the power of His Word. In the name of Jesus, we declare healing. We declare freedom and liberty now. Father, in the name of Jesus, ask and you shall receive. Ask for God to empower you. Ask for God to fill you with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I tell you what, He answers that prayer. Ask and you shall receive. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's just give God praise. Father, we just want to praise you this morning. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.